The Cameroonian was unbelievably good, incredibly quick, and tough as nails, and on the pitch a truly malevolent force against the opposition. In the first half alone, he wreaked havoc from the right flank, as their left defense failed miserably to keep up with him over and over again. The young bloke was playing his very first match for our team but played so tightly with his teammates that it truly seemed he had spent more than even one season on the team. Twice he dangerously hammered the ball into the penalty area and carried out a couple of brilliant passes putting the ball right in the strike zone of the goal. All of which he did while at the same time working from behind and helping Iron Mike with defense. Then at the 26th minute he carried out such an amazing demonstration of dribbling that our manager Harris was overheard muttering to himself something like, Oh, what a prick. Which old man Harris considered to be the highest praise possible for a player. His name was Fabrice, Fabrice Sewer and according to his passport he was only 19 years old. However, that is not a die-hard fact, as we all know how things really are with these blokes from Cameroon, Ghana, or the Ivory Coast. Although in this case, Francis Collins, who tipped me off about the brilliant find and got his 5% cut on the deal, swore by all the gods above and even on the health of his poor elderly mother that the bloke was in fact really and truly only 19. Bloody hell, Robbie, are you blind? Old man Harris screamed as he jumped up and ran far beyond the boundaries of the technical zone. Can't you see him for Christ's sake? The bloke is standing there like a lemon. Pass him the sodding ball. You imbecile. Davy Roberts was our main CDM and his main task was tearing the legs off of their attacking midfielders, but sometimes he also managed to make a mint pass. And Davy went too far and the pass was so perfect that even Tony Cross would probably have envied it. Then the Cameroonian burst into the zone. It was a pleasure watching their left fieldsman. A red-haired Scotsman, with a ponytail and beard like Alexi Lala's, trying to catch up with our Cameroonian. What a sight. The bloke flew around like a meteor. He took control of the ball and went to the right. Their midfielder tried to catch him, the player in the center left shifted their focus too. You could see their lineup bursting at the seams. And Fabrice did everything right. He didn't overdo moving around the ball and didn't give it away ahead of time, but then passed it a little diagonally, as if on a silver platter. And Alan Parker. Our main striker, arrived just in time. Then it was just a matter of technique. A kick, and goal. I automatically checked the stopwatch. It was the 42nd minute and the score was 1-0. Way to go. That's our team. Alex, bloody hell. Where did you find this bloody cannibal? Johnny Martin. The assistant coach almost strangled me with his huge paws. Come on blokes, don't let up. Get it together. Old Harris's mug didn't move a muscle, but he looked rather pleased. Come on, let's go. Come on. There was almost no time left until the break. We were escorted to the locker room like heroes. The den roared like we were winning against the Spurs or Chelsea, not some bloody Reading. 
However, it was still nice. We went out for the second half in a good mood and even the first half thrashing of young Fleming by old man Harris for his error didn't serve to dampen anyone's spirits. No one likes us. No one likes us. No one likes us. We don't care. Roared the stands. Come on, lads. Old Harris was clapping his hands like he was cracking nuts. Be careful with the defense. Pass the ball faster and put them under more pressure. 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 You couldn't say that the boys from Reading were playing that bad today. They honestly tried to turn the game around and from the very beginning of the second half they drove forward like madmen, but in the end that's what killed them. In the first counter-attack, young Fleming found Parker's pass and the defender had no choice but to foul and for him it was already his second yellow card. After that, they continued to attempt to pull something off, but their efforts were no longer serious. The Cameroonian was still running around like a bloody cheater. And even the fact that the manager of the reading team replaced the Scot, who was completely exhausted, for a fresh defender, it didn't help them much. In the 73rd minute, our Novichok moved to the center and suddenly shot from the left. If the rascal Collins had seen the bloke kick with his left, even though all the documents said that he was right-footed. He would have asked not for five, but probably for 10%. The goalkeeper jumped into the corner as if he was remembering his time playing for the Gunners, but even that didn't save him.